Men who have sold slash donated and gave permission for the child to contact you at 18. What is your story? Oh hey, I can answer this. I'm not a donor, but I was donor conceived, along with my sister, same donor. I had a great dad, and never had any desire to find out who my donor was, but I was always curious about siblings, especially when I learned there's no legal limit on how many children you can father when you donate the US. Well, 123 and me test later, and the first result on the top of the list is a half sister in Texas. We get in contact, realize we have a ton in common, and it sparked a fire in her to find more siblings. She took an ancestry DNA test and the top of that list was a man in California, listed as father. She got in touch with him right away, turns out he's a fantastic guy. He was adopted himself, and also got in contact with his birth mom as an adult, so he had been on our side of the situation, and was very open, and willing to talk. His wife has been super supportive of us meeting too. He has three, uh, organically made kids of his own. I was especially ecstatic to learn that I'm a big sister, plus we've since found three more half siblings who've all been very cool and excited to find each other. At this point, I've met all but one of them in person, and I got to meet my biological grandmother too. TL, DR I went from having a dad and one sibling to having two dads and eight siblings over the span of a couple of years. It's been pretty cool. That's super neat. I did a bunch of egg donations I'm, and waiting to see one pop up on 23 and m, however the oldest would only be around 9, so I doubt I'll see anything for years, if ever. What really helped me was to keep my expectations low. My experience is a perfect storm of best case scenario overall, but there are, so many factors that could change. Hell, I didn't even want to talk to my B.O. dad, until my sister talked me into it. But I've talked to other donor conceived people who get horrible reactions from the relatives they've reached out to, so it all depends on your situation and feelings. I don't wanna be too much of a downer, I just want to help temper your expectations. I do hope for your sake, that your donor kids are as open to meeting and experiencing you as you are. Getting to see all the weird similarities and mannerisms is such a treat. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out quite a bit, and if you don't enjoy the videos in the future anymore, you can always unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. So, I'm not the dad, but a kid. So my B.O. dad donated and gave permission to be identified. Didn't even have to be after 18. In counting, because we're not sure if we've found all of us yet, there are 53 half siblings, all his kids. My full sister and I didn't know we were donor babies until I was a freshman in college and her a junior in high school. It was a few more years before we found out the scope of our family. As such, I never got to meet the man as he passed away in 2018, but I've been getting to know my half siblings and I'm sad to have missed him. He apparently engaged in annual reunions, and was interested in getting to know all of the kids if they, and their families, were open to it. We all support each other basically by default, even though we didn't grow up together. What's even wilder about him is, that he got national news coverage for something besides his giant flock of kids. The guy got married to a woman the day he met her as a competition, to be his bride in the Mall of America. It was apparently a heartfelt story and the two of them had a 20 something year marriage with 4 kids that they raised themselves. The Mall of America even has a plaque with his name on it now, so you can go find him, if you really try. The man was a weirdo, but in the best way. He was kind and generous with his time and really seemed to care about asterisk all asterisk of his kids, or at least the ones he knew about. This is bananas to me, but not because of the number of children. But because my mom was cowalkers with your B.O. dad's wife, my mom shared that exact MOA story to me, and it inspired the bachelor. He was diagnosed with <laughs> at the time and that's when my mom shared their amazing story never knew this part about him though. A guy I know in his 70s got a call from a guy in his 50s saying hey, I'm your son, oh and I just learned I have a genetic disease so your other kids should probably get tested. 
Credit to the guy in his 50s, if that's the reason he called, just to warn his B.O. dad's family. Class move. I experienced something similar. I was adopted as a baby, and had no contact with my B.O. family, beyond my mom visiting a couple times, when I was too young to remember. Out of the blue, when I was around 13, we got a letter from her sister, explaining that my grandma had just died of diabetes, and that I should be aware it ran in the family. My own mom couldn't be bothered to warn me, but her sister, that she hasn't spoken to in decades stepped up and did it. My aunt and I exchanged letters, and ended up meeting, when I was about 22. Still haven't contacted my mom. Edit cuz spelling is hard. How is yours and your aunt's relationship now? It's good. We've seen each other in person a few times and we are facebook friends now. We are not super close, since I live in a different state, but I'm glad to have her in my life. She showed me pics of my grandparents, and told me about the family. She told me the name of my B.O. dad, which wasn't on my birth certificate, but I haven't tried to contact him yet. I was donor conceived. I took a DNA test, his natural born daughter took a DNA test. So really neither of us gave permission. There are 28 siblings so far. It was quite a shock. I wasn't expecting it and didn't know. I was 38. I've met the donor and most of the half siblings. He's a cool guy. I think it is eerie how I see many of my mannerisms in him and the other siblings. I know there is a wide range of emotions for people who experience this sort of thing, but for me, it was generally positive. It is incredible how the similarities are passed down. My father-in-law had a daughter that was the result of a one-night stand and was adopted by a wonderful family. The adoption agency had a registration of birth parents and kids who could each, blind to the other, give permission to be contacted, and only if both parties did, they'd put them in contact. So this happens in her early 20s, and they make arrangements for her to fly to meet her birth family, including my wife and her brother, her half-siblings. My wife goes to pick her up at the airport, since the parents live out of town. There were no arrangements, no pictures, nothing, this was pre facebook my wife saw her come out the doors, knew without question it was her, and she knew the same, they had a huge tearful hug without even any words. They just knew, by looks, by mannerisms, whatever. The incredible thing is, I've shown pictures of the half sister, with or without her birth father and half sister, and everyone agrees she doesn't actually look much like them. But there's something about the looks, and how they act that is, so similar between all of them, it really is incredible. Edit, one more detail. We found out years later, that the father and daughter contacted the agency, to open themselves up to contact, within 24 hours of each other. A complete coincidence. The agency actually didn't do it for a couple weeks, because they were trying to contact the daughter's adoptive parents who had passed away, hence the delay, because they just assumed there had been contact, since they were in touch so impossibly close together. I definitely think there's a huge nature component in people's mannerisms. My partner has never met his B.O. dad, but his mom also says it's uncanny how much he acts like him sometimes. But on the flip side, Nacha seems to play a pretty big role too because I see a lot of his stepdad, who adopted him, when he was 8, in him as well, just in the way that he acts, his sense of humor and all that. I donated for 6 months in university. Twice a week. I gave consent to be contacted. That was close to 20 years ago now. I did call and ask once, my resulted in 24 successful pregnancies. That was all the office could tell me. I have not done 23 and more anything like that. Edit, added a missing word. I find it ironic that donating s is usually something people do, only when they need money, however by past society and nature standards the simple fact of having 24 kids makes you a wildly successful male specimen. They are pretty picky about who they'll let donate. Height requirements, education requirements, medical requirements, no criminal record, etc. Then the recipients get to choose the donor, based on their profile. Unsurprisingly, the most prolific donors are like 6 feet 2 inches white Harvard students. 
you would be surprised by how much genes incorporate into your lifestyle and even mannerisms. I met my biological father when I was 25 after never meeting or seeing him my whole life. The little things were so weird. We sat in a chair the same way we nervously bit the skin next to our fingernails at the same time. The first drink I ever ordered was a white Russian because I thought it was interesting. Lo and behold, when we met he and his family bring white Russians to the lake because it's their favorite drink. I've kept a $2 bill in my wallet since I was 14 for no reason at all. After we talked. He has had a $2 bill in his wallet since he was a kid too. Just really weird things coincidences I learned in my 30s my brother and I were sperm donor conceived via the same donor. Before I even met him, seeing his Facebook pictures blew my mind. I'd never really resembled anyone in my family who raised me, my brother looks like my mother, and figured I must take after older ancestors. When I found my biological father's profile, I saw my face staring back at me. When I met him, I learned he shares some of the same hobbies as us, that were never explored with our social family. I was adopted, and the first time I saw a picture of my birth parents, my mind was blown. It is so weird seeing someone who looks like you, when you have grown up never looking like any of your family. I've tried to describe that feeling to people, but no one else around me understood. Seeing you mention it made me feel a little less alone in that feeling. Yay my biological father, and our spitting image apparently, but for me, I think I just notice more differences in looks. Gonna have to see some pics of him at my age soon. I started donating almost exactly 10 years when I was living on the west coast. I had only been exposed to the concept of donating through movies when one would do it for gas money on road trips, or when you were in dire need for fast cash, it wasn't like that at all. It took over a month and many unpaid donations to even qualify to become a donor. They did a very through screening process to make sure you very viable and would survive the freezing process. Then they tested it to make sure you weren't a carrier of potential known diseases that could be passed down. After all of that I started donating 2 to 3 times a week for a few months until I ended up moving across the country to go to grad school. I said I was open to being contacted once they were 18 and was excited about that prospect when I would be in my 40s. One day I randomly logged onto Facebook and checked my messages. I had a message request from a random person in Australia which just seemed like spam, I'm a citizen of the USA, but was living in Germany at the time. Instead of immediately deleting the message, I read it, and a lady explained that curiosity got the better of her, and she tried to find the donor of her two kids. She used the little information that she knew about the donor and slowly linked the info to me. I even had TBT photos on my profile that looked like her kids. It was a match. I wasn't upset, but rather excited as I now knew more information about who and how I had helped. That was two years ago and now we communicate a couple times every year to update each other about what had happened in our lives. It's really exciting to see the growth of the two offspring that I helped produce. They're both under 10 and they know who I am, so they'll be able to grow into the understanding of our different than normal relationship. The clinic told me that I had birthed 7 children in total so 5 are still unknown to me at this time. Overall it has been a good process and I'm really happy that I took part in it. We'll do it again and I still get emails from the clinic telling me that if I'm ever back in the area to consider becoming a donor again. I was a donor and when this happened to me it was okay. Four separate offspring at various times over the course of about 6 months contacted me, all just as they turned 18 and records were open to them. It was cool for me to see pictures of them, and how much they looked like me. It was also good to hear the stories from their parents, of how I helped them conceive a much needed child, which I really appreciated. But that was all. A few nice, polite emails were exchanged, some kindnesses, and then we stopped emailing. I didn't want or expect more, I'm just glad to know they existed, and that they got to connect with their biological heritage. 
I supposedly, as far as the donor system estimates, have a lot more out there, but I expect these are the only ones that will contact me, since I assume most of them will want to do it, as soon as they can and all of my donations happened within an 18 month span. A few mls probably meant a lot to them. Showed that you cared, but ultimately recognized, that you weren't their dad. I emailed my donor at 18 sent a little biography and some pictures, and said I understood he wasn't my dad, and he responded with a yeah, never contact me again, I haven't told my wife and kids, and attached the worst, most far away picture of himself he could. There are at least 18 of us kids, most of us know each other, and the ones of us who were interested in reaching out, maybe 5 or 6 of us, were super disappointed he was so rude. So from a donor kid, thanks for being kind. Don't take it personally, for a long time, donation was sold to the donors as totally anonymous slash no one will ever come back to you, and then that all changed over the last couple decades. Many people who did it, when I was younger did so with the understanding that they would never be known to their potential offspring, and it must be a little jarring to have it happen now. Bumped into a high school acquaintance when Pride Week was going on. She was in town with her wife for it, and I lived in the area. We are from a small town, so it was nice to see a friendly face, and we were chit chatting. A few weeks later they asked if I could donate. I was on a free spirit sabbatical at the time, so I figured why not, I never wanted to raise children of my own, and they liked my genetics. We went through a clinic, and after two tries she got pregnant and had twins. I've only seen pictures of the children so far. I think the weirdest part afterwards was them asking if I'd be willing to donate to other friends of those. Apparently there's like an entire database of couples looking for donors and my email account was flooded with requests. It's what I imagine. Being a pretty girl on a dating app is like, I was bombarded. Without sounding arrogant, I'm 6 feet 4 inches, naturally thin blue eyes, blonde hair, graduate level education and I don't wear glasses, a lot of inquiries. It was too much, and the few people I reached out to were very pushy, and requesting things, like I can't fly to their house in Washington to do home insemination, because they didn't want to pay for a clinic, or some requesting I meet up, and hook up with them, and they'd tell their kid it was some dude they met on vacation, or even some requesting I stick around, to act as a co-parent slash cool uncle. I haven't donated since, and I think the satisfaction of two offspring is enough for me now. I have a relative who is friends with a couple, who have kids through a single donor. It turns out, that their entire friend group use that same donor and the kids are all about the same age, and go to the same school so there is a class where half of the kids are literally half siblings. Okay, so this story doesn't completely fit but this might be a good place to share it. I always knew that my mom had fertility issues and did IVF in order to have me, but I didn't know I was a donor baby until about 3 years ago. It was a surprise to everyone in my family. Wild to not know for that long, but it gets even wilder. I've always been interested in genealogy and got an ancestry DNA kit from a relative for my birthday a little over 3 years ago. I was excited to finally get my results back and start building my family tree. However, when I got the results back I found that I matched up with a lot of my mom's relatives that had done the test, but none of my dad's. I tried to shrug it off as the technology not being good or specific enough, but I couldn't explain all these individuals who were popping up as a strong match as a half-sibling. Eventually one of them messaged me and informed me that they all had the same father who was donor and that they were so happy to find another half sibling. I was a little freaked out but eventually confronted my parents about it and they were completely shocked. My father had supposedly given a sample for the IVF and they had never even considered using a donor. Eventually my mom tracked down some paperwork from the IVF clinic they used and we did some research and found that the clinic closed shortly after my birth after being involved in a few different lawsuits relating to mix up of IVF samples. At that point they had been closed for over two decades so there wasn't really much we could do. Everyone always commented that I had features that matched my father so it was never even imagined that this could be possible. 
Luckily, my family took it in stride, and it hasn't changed anything. On top of that I have 25 half siblings, and counting who are all really cool wonderful people. We have a Facebook group, and are hoping to meet up sometime soon. It's also been cool to see nature vs nurture in action. A lot of us have pretty much the same eyes, noses, and foreheads and work in similar fields, or have similar interests. Some of us even went to the same colleges, and never even knew it. I've chatted with my biological father online and he's a really cool guy. He's incredibly kind and personable, and we share many personality traits and interests. Things seemed pretty crazy for a while, but I'm happy to know, and to have gotten to know my half-siblings and he's been happy to get to know us, and learn about our lives. I regret it. Deeply. I'm in my 20s. A family friend had been trying to get pregnant for some time, but was having difficulty as she's single, and in her late 30s. Good job and all that, but it's a small town and she's not very outgoing. But desperately wanted a child. So after a few years of watching her try and fail I offered to help. Turns out my f***ing are the good swimmers. And she was shortly after pregnant. What I failed to take into account was that this would also be my first child. But not my child. And as a close family friend the infant is over at my parents house, being babbasad pretty much every day. My immediate family are the only people who know. Her family and the rest of the world are unaware, and believe it to be an unknown <laughs> donor. It was clear from the start that I would never be known as the father to the kid. I told her I didn't mind either way she wanted to do it. So now here I am. Still getting used to it. And realizing I've done something I'll regret for the rest of my life, but that is undoubtedly that best thing I've ever done for someone else. Talk to her again about it, see if you can babysit, and develop a relationship with the baby. Who knows. Maybe the mother would love that, but doesn't want to change what seems to be an okay situation. I'm an own donor for friends of mine, one of which I've known, since we were in grade school. Before she came out, we always joked that, if we were both single and childless in our 30s we would get married. Flash forward about 20 years and she and her wife approached me at a party, and asked if I would be interested, in being an own donor for them. I have been with my current so for 12 years and neither of us have any intentions on being parents, so I thought this was an excellent way for me to continue the bloodline as well as give two of my favorite people a child they wanted so badly. I talked it over with my so, and we decided to go ahead and do it. We drafted contracts, that essentially say, that I will have zero responsibility for the child, but the child will be fully aware I'm the biological father from day one. I live on the coast and they live near Chicago, so logistics were very tough. Planning travel around ovulation schedules, shipping kits back and forth, we tried it all. Finally after a year and a half of trying it finally stuck. The boy turned one year old in December. Due to the pandemic I've only been able to see him once as a little baby and once a few weeks ago. I couldn't be happier with the decision. So many people look at me like I'm crazy and always ask how I'm handling it. But really, to me it's no different than having a cousin or other close sibling. I subscribe to the belief that the parents are who raise the kid, and they are doing an incredible job so far. We are actually trying for number 2 now with the other mom. Hopefully this try doesn't take as long. This is the end of the video, thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two, 